for the embryos for stem cell research. The other problem with that pro-choice argument seems to be that um, to many religious thinkers, they hear the pro-choice argument that it's just a woman's right to choose as being it's a woman's right to choose to do the wrong thing or to murder a baby. In other words, uh, if you remove discussion about the moral status of the fetus, and make it all about almost property rights or privacy rights, the personal rights of the woman to choose, you're, you're not even touching on whether or not it's ethical to make that choice. You're just talking about how you have the right to make that choice ethical or not. Uh, yes. Um, I mean, then you get into debates about, well, you know, do women have rights to choose even if they're going to choose something that is unethical? Um, you know, on some theories of the role of the state, people would say, well, you do have a right to choose what's unethical. The state shouldn't be a nanny and should tell you what's right or wrong. Right. But uh, I guess the, the anti-abortion people are really going to say that you have to protect the rights of the fetus against the rights of the woman. Mm. And so then we get back to the question of whether the fetus has a right to life. And, and that's why I don't think we can really avoid looking at that question. I just think that when you look at it, it doesn't come out the way that the anti-abortion people want it to come out. We're getting tight on time, but I'd still love to talk to you about animal rights and vegetarianism, your views on that, which caused a stir at our conference last year when you kind of challenged Richard Dawkins on the issue. Um, would you mind joining me next week just to continue our discussion because there's a lot more ground to cover? Sure, DJ. I'll be happy to do that. Okay. Thank you very much for joining me on Point of Inquiry. Peter Singer. Thanks. It's been good to be